It is a beautiful day on our homestead today and what you see behind me is my shelf full of dried herbs and so today we're going to go out to the garden and we're going to harvest herbs again and I thought I'd bring you along and kind of show you my process. I love hanging herbs up in the house to dry. I do have dehydrators. I know they can be done in there. I have before but in the middle of summer and all the chaos and everything else that God has called me to spend my time on, it's so nice to just come in and just hang my herbs up. And by the time these are dry and I'm ready to put them in jars, crunch them up, I'll show you all that process of all the things that I do. I am ready to go back out and harvest again. So if you have herbs in your garden and you want to bring them in and dehydrate them and they are herbs that you can harvest throughout the year, this would be our third harvest that we're going out to do. This might be a tip for you. Once you hang them, once they're crispy, about a week to two weeks later, your plants are ready to harvest again. So I'm gonna show you inside where we hang our herbs, and I'm gonna bring you outside and show you where all our herbs are growing. We have lots of herbs here at our property. We've tucked them in here, there, and everywhere. And just like our home, we try and maximize our space and steward well what God has put in our life. And so my home, just like my yard, has things tucked in every nook and corner so that we can just use our space efficiently. we need before we harvest our herbs is baskets. So I have many baskets up here as you can tell. I also have them just laying throughout the house. So we're going to grab a few baskets that we can stick some herbs in. We're going to get this one as well. And we'll grab this one. Let's see, I think we'll grab one more down here. I think we'll grab one more down here. Another thing that we need are scissors. So we can cut our herbs and here is a tip that has made life very efficient for me is I grab a baggie of rubber bands so that while I am out there cutting my herbs I can bundle them up and rubber band them out in the garden and lay them in bundles in my baskets. I have brought these in before on my table and bundle them up in the house but I have found to save time and to just be so much more efficient when I come inside and see all the other things that need my attention like sink full of dishes and eggs that need washed and other things I need to do I can just take these bundles of herbs and just hang them up throughout the house and go on with my day. So one of the first places that I will bring you to that has herbs is this back garden right off of our deck going into our backyard. This was our, our first original herb garden when we first moved in here about 17 years ago. And so I have mint. I have two kinds of mint out here. And honestly, I have tried digging it up and tried laying mulch and I feel like I'm just, I let it go. <laughs> honestly, I am one of those crazy ladies who let mint just grow, especially in these medicinal perennial beds. We have all sorts of flowers and other things that I use medicinally. And so I let my mint go as my ground cover. I will let it take over. It actually crowds the weeds out. And the idea is that you will come out and harvest from this area three to five times a season. And so then 
as it's growing as a ground cover and it's helping the weeds i'm coming out here and i'm trimming it back and trimming it back and trimming it back i might be crazy and totally off my rocker for letting mint just have its way in my flower beds but it gives me a harvest it helps with the weeds and it also adds just so much more um, flowers for the pollinators and stuff so right now we have a whole bunch of mint right here one of the times of day that is ideal to pick your herbs is early in the morning after the dew has settled or in the evening time around dusk. I am trying to beat the bees. There are already bumblebees out, I see. And so getting out here before the heat of the day, you, will, you won't have to fight the pollinators for all of the herbs. So I'm gonna first cut this mint and then over here, we have some more mint. This is chocolate mint and peppermint again. This perennial bed over here, we don't have any mint yet growing, which is totally fine. But we also have some other things that I haven't really harvested yet medicinally, like the Queen Anne's lace and um, the catnip and stuff. So. So the first area that we're going to harvest is this peppermint. And it is okay to harvest your mint with the flowers on. The flowers are actually edible too. So when I dry this, I will just break it all up into tea. And we're going to harvest. The next area that we are going to harvest herbs from is our tea garden. So, but we are basically working on our mints today. And then one day I'm going to have to come back and do like the yarrow and some other things. I have marshmallow on the other side that I need to harvest. So today I'm going to stay focused on mints. So inside this tea garden, which you guys have all seen before, we have six different beds. And each bed has a different kind of mint. As you can tell, they are really ready to be harvested and we've been trying to plant things in this garden of course that are good for teas so i have lavender i have edible daisies two kinds of chamomile each bed has a miniature rose so we're trying to add a little bit of beauty along with being able to use the rose petals for tea and so this is going to be our next area we also have chives next area to harvest so this bed is chocolate mint. This bed is apple mint. This is one of my favorite mints to grow. It gets about two, about three feet tall and the leaves are big. It's very mild compared to some of the other mints. This bed has chamomile, which has already been harvested. And um, this has orange mint. That's what that one's called. And I have to make sure I label that one. And it looks like we also have a beautiful flower down here somewhere. I didn't see that before. So that's orange mint. Actually, this is peppermint. This is the orange mint. The leaves that are like half circles. So that is peppermint. And then over here, we have spearmint which is what's in the middle. And I believe this is chocolate mint. No, this is spearmint. I think there's two kinds of spearmint in there. Yeah, chocolate mint, spearmint. Y'all, it gets confusing. <laughs> that is why I have signs. <laughs> um, so yes, we have two kinds of spearmint in this one. This bed, we have curly mint, which just kind of gets all over the place. Comes out of the side of the beds. As you can see, there's a whole patch of curly mint there. You should focus a little bit better for you. So that's curly mint. And then over here we have pineapple mint, which this is its second year, so it's just now spreading throughout the bed. And then we have chamomile, which I need to do another harvest of that on another day. So we're gonna get, so I'm gonna get to harvesting this these beds of mint. So these beds are all harvested and as you can tell I didn't cut all of it out. I just cut it down to the top of the raised bed so that it'll grow back again. 
And some of these places, like here, where the apple mint is growing out of the ground, I'm actually going to leave that and dig it up and put it in a pot, and I'm going to bring it to market and sell at market. So all the apple mint is cut up. I do have a few more pieces back there, but I think I'm going to... Yeah, go ahead and just kind of let those be. And then take off. You can see how pretty that is. And with this bed as well, I think this is spearmint, but I might have to check. It might be catnip. So I didn't harvest it. I did harvest what I knew was spearmint. Just kind of let that go. And the curly mint, I had the same thing with these ones that are out of the bed here. I'm just going to dig these up and put them in a pot and get those sold at market. I did not harvest my pineapple mint. Isn't it so lovely? It's variegated. Oh, it's so pretty. And it's got a citrus smell to it. I'm going to let it go for a little bit and really let it spread in this bed. This is the first year that this has been out here as well. place to harvest our herbs for this morning is our herb garden. This was created about four to five years ago and the idea was that I would have boxes that were divided into sections and each section would have a different herb and I moved mint out here which was wonderful um, because I had heard that they were a companion plant to the Concord grapes and they helped to keep the bugs off and we have Concord grapes back here behind the herb garden. But after two or three years of struggling with the mint, I've decided to put our herbs into these raised beds and just let the mint take over like a ground cover again. So we have two kinds of mint in this bed. We have peppermint and chocolate mint. So I do the same thing I do in my flower beds. I come out here and I just try and harvest on a regular basis so that it doesn't take over too much and I could manage it and be a good steward of it. We have mint along right here and then over here we have or peppermint. We have peppermint here and here. And then in the back I think we have a tiny little bit of curly mint. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest the last of our mints in the garden for this morning before <laughs> before the bees beat me to it and they the herbs here are harvested i am leaving some mint and i'm probably going to come through with the weed trimmer and get the pathways i had a friend ask me recently how do you do it all she was i think impressed with some of the pictures and the things that i was showing her and i said the truth is i don't and what i can do I do with God's grace and mercy alone and his strength because here's an example there is nothing planted in these beds this is an oregano that's went to seed a long time ago it is a perennial here so my thought was to probably dig it up and put it somewhere else I don't have anything growing in these beds except mint and there's weeds mixed in here the raspberries I need to weave throughout here most of these raspberries and these cattle panels didn't do very well. Um, this one looks like it needs to be harvested. Because I only have one row. Here, I'll show you I'll show you another example of why of how I don't do it all. Um, there's two rows in the main garden that only have plants, and so I would run the hose for the herb garden, but I wouldn't run it as much um, because I didn't have a lot to water over here so I went and read it as regularly as I should which is why some of these berries didn't do very well. This is asparagus here that's kind of gone wild. Again there's nothing planted in these beds. This is my pile of sticks and boards that I wanted to make garden signs for. They are still sitting here. The garden signs may not happen this year. Um, and you can see there is oregano down in the depths of the of the asparagus and I didn't harvest that today I might try at some point but here's our market garden y'all there's weeds everywhere um, one of the ways that I do manage what I have been able to manage is that I have a goal every week 
that I focus on one part of the yard per week. And if I can get that part of the yard done um, and move on to another part of the yard by the week, time is over, then great. And so last week was weeding. I went around and I weeded all the flower beds and I weeded the herb garden. I weeded um, the kitchen garden and all the tea garden, everything. I just, it was weeds. That's all I was focused on. The one garden I did not touch was this market garden back here. And then this week it's harvesting herbs and I worked out in the orchard mowing grass and weed trimming and yeah you can't even walk in here there's so many weeds um I have to give myself grace we all have to give ourselves grace whether you have a garden or just raising babies in a home or newly married there's seasons of abundance there's seasons where you're gonna feel like you do everything right and then there's seasons where not everything goes right um our market garden all our beds got ruined this winter with a big snow drift, so I had to take the beds off and I laid plastic down trying to grow what I could with what I had. And I planted over 100 tomatoes and squash in these beds. And we had a vole come through and ruin them. And we had really extreme heat for the two days after I planted. And even though I was watering between the, the voles, there were two of them, they were running around under the plastic. Do you see that hummingbird over there? Oh, I wish I could zoom in on her. She's on my trumpet vine. See if I can get you. Um, anyway, this whole garden, these plants were gone within two weeks of planting. And so I need to come out here with the weed trimmer and just trim it all up. There is some lemon balm in here that I might harvest down in that area. But, guys, this is this is the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> you see all the beautiful gardens and the places that I've made as such a sanctuary for me to go to. And this is not one of them. <sighs> but you know what? I can focus on this when I have the time to do it. And I know that my weed trimmer is my friend because I can just come through here and I can just weed trim up all these weeds that are down here. And our goal is to build new raised beds this winter maybe fall and get some new raised beds built and then just be able to reconstruct this space lay down some plastic put some pathways in that's okay the the trumpet vine though i would love for it to go along the whole back fence so I'm slowly trying to whittle it down so it covers the whole back fence of this big garden but on this side another bed of stuff that was ruined on this side, we have some tomatoes in this bed that are struggling. I'm watering this garden as soon as um, tonight, as soon as I get done harvesting the herbs because the sprinkler system um, is the same. See, so we use these tea posts, and so when I water this, it waters the herb garden. I really wanted to get those herbs harvested. I do have some melons that are they're doing okay. I'm going to come back and check and see if I need to pollinate those. And then this is a row of tomatoes. That seems to be doing well. I have to come through here and prune them. But that is all I have growing back here. I mean, we have the gardens over there, the perennial beds, and some oregano. And then we have a little rhubarb patch. I'll just walk you over here. Um, so we have some chives here in this bed. This is some oregano I transplanted. Um, yeah, see, I like the flower beds to just kind of do their thing as like a medicinal perennial bed and I can harvest stuff for teas and jelly. This had peas in it but the storm must have knocked them over. This is a small rhubarb patch and I don't know if y'all grow rhubarb but I'm wondering if I need to move it. I don't feel like it's doing very well. Um, some of the leaves are dying. It's been here for about two months so again I think it could be a watering issue but and see this, a lot of this just isn't tending to. I do have some more apple mint back here. I'm not gonna harvest that. A lot of these beds are just, I need to water them better and take care of them. So yeah, <laughs> this is proof that we don't get it all done. Ooh, <laughs> a volunteer sunflower. I might just let it go and see what happens. <laughs> there are some spaces in my yard that are beautiful and lovely, and I really enjoy spending time out there. And there are some spaces in my yard that I avoid 
until he can get the motivation and the discipline to go out there and take better care of it. So for now, we are going to take our mint inside and I will come out here another day and tip all these raspberries, pull all of the ends, all the pinch, you pinch all the tips off and it creates more vines. Get them weaved in and out of the fence. Get this all weed trimmed up and focus on what I can focus on. Do you want to see how much mint we harvested together? A whole farmhouse table full. Can you believe that? This is amazing. This is what helps me when I see parts of my yard and my gardens that aren't doing so well. This is mint. <laughs> so, we did quite a bit of harvesting. I am surprised every time I harvest how much comes out of those gardens, just those three spots that we took from. So I have got to go through here and I'm going to break up some of these bundles because you don't want to hang your herbs in a huge bundle um, because if there is moisture in them, you know, they could mold easily. So you want to kind of break them up to a manageable size. I'll show you like this might be like the thickest that you would want that to be. Um, anything thicker than that, like, definitely want to break something like this up. Um, aren't they lovely? <laughs> like, my house just smells so good right now. Um, but yeah, so, this whole side here is all peppermint. Lovely peppermint. Um, they are going to be wonderful for teas. Mint is also great to have out in your gardens. Even if you don't want to harvest medicinally, they are awesome for repelling mosquitoes and bugs and they help, you know, help the pollinators so you have good bugs that come into your garden. So, and they also are companion plants to a few other things. Uh-oh. I think somebody has spied our table of mint. <laughs> we have an indoor cat. He's pretty good about leaving stuff alone, but <laughs> since catnip's part of the mint family, I think I may have to put these up pretty early. <laughs> So, we have peppermint along this side here. This is our chocolate mint over here. And like I said, it's okay if you harvest with the flowers. The flowers are edible as well. And then this section here is all curly mint. And then we have our section of spearmint. And then all down here is apple mint. This is just one of my favorites. Look at how big those leaves are. I really, really love that. So, are you growing mint? If you are, what kind of mint do you have? I have, I'm gonna name them, I can't remember how many. I have apple mint and peppermint and spearmint and pineapple mint and orange mint and chocolate mint. So, I think I have six. And we don't have any mint over in the orchard garden, which is actually where I wanna put some, you know, in some pots or just having them and a section like I don't mind taking, you know, taking the room. Um, somebody had putting them over in the orchard where I can like let them just take over a little space and have again another place to have mint, another place for pollinators. I have heard that they are good under fruit trees as a fruit guild. A bunch of fruit trees out there that I am building a guild around. Some of them have like echinacea and bee balm and other things. So mint might be an idea to put out there around them. And again, like I said, they are invasive. People get scared by that word. That just means you have to take care of it and it, it deserves a little extra attention. Give it grace and mercy. Don't put it in a place where 
you know, it you, it's going to do what God created it to do and you get mad. <laughs> like, give it a place where it can, you know, grow and thrive and then harvest it. You know, don't let it go to waste. There are times when I don't harvest my mint and it gets reseeded and it just grows back again next year. All of these mints are perennial in my area. They will all come back again. And so, yeah, I just encourage you. This, this is what we're created to do. To just to use what God's put in front of us. We're created to thank Him for what He's provided. And we need to encourage other people and show other people that, you know, mint is not a scary thing. <laughs> you can grow it. You can harvest it. And you can have a wonderful teas and wonderful medicinal balms and bless people with it in pots. All things, friends. All things. Well, I am off to divide up my mint and hang it throughout my house. And I will bring you along and show you how I process all the mints. are hung up on the front porch I have to make some little labels to stick inside the rubber bands because if you've ever dried herbs before and you think you're going to remember what they look like when they're dried just do yourself a favor and make some labels because I always forget and they look so similar when they're dried and sometimes I end up just taking a leaf off of them and smelling them to make sure that I've got the right kind and then in the kitchen this is full once again. I love this time of year where I can just see herbs drying and flowers and all sorts of pretty things that I bring in from the garden. So we've got all of these bigger herbs over here on the shelf. And one thing I will show you, so our apple mint is really long. Like I said, it can grow to be like two or three feet tall. But this is what the apple mint looks like when it's dried. With everyone. So see, this long one is going to shrink up to be maybe 12 to 16 inches. So now... I have to kind of process all these dried herbs that have been drying for a couple weeks here. It's a very simple process that I do, but I'm going to put some measures in place that I did not do today when I brought in all my herbs. Um, my floor is a mess. There's leaves and things and bits everywhere. That's okay. We'll sweep. No big deal. But before I process these, this is, you know, this is a precious harvest that the Lord has given us. I'm going to lay a towel on the table and I've got some cookie sheets and lay parchment down and try and catch as much of this as I can so that way it can all be put aside for teas and tinctures and balms and salves and all the things. Herbs. I've got all my dishes done 
for my eggs washed, put in the fridge for market. So yeah, let me show you my system. I got this big old pan right here. I think my mother-in-law gave it to me years ago. And it just got ended up getting rusted. So we've tried to scrub it out quite a few times. So what I do is I just put it by my um, herb cabinet. And every time I dry herbs, I just pull it out. And I wipe it out. And then I lay like parchment paper or freezer paper in it. That way, it's a really deep place to put herbs when you're trying to crunch them. And it's also big enough that I can do a big batch at once. So some of the essentials that I have is a towel, like I said before. But I know that I'm not going to keep everything on this towel, that it's going to end up on the floor. So after I go through this process, I will tidy everything up. I cannot wait until the Lord gives me the ability to get that greenhouse roof fixed. Um, I'd like to turn into like a garden house kind of place, potting shed. And it would be so wonderful to be outside doing this in the shade. Um, the greenhouse is in partial shade, but I just thought, oh, that day, that day hopefully will come. And then I can be outside and I don't care what kind of mess I make. I have a bowl because all the stems, after I get done taking off what I want, the stems will go in here and be given to the chickens. Herbs are wonderful for your chickens and ducks and turkeys and all your animals. So if you dry a bunch of herbs at once, don't forget about them. Don't throw them in the trash. Throw them, don't throw them in your compost pile. Give them to your animals. They'll peck out what's left and it'll compost down and it'll be just a wonderful thing for their immune system. I also have some jars ready. These, this one I got at Walmart. Our Walmart is finally starting to sell these. It was a long time when they didn't. And so keep an eye out for Walmart. These are perfect jars for dehydrating um, items like herbs and you know dried, sun-dried tomatoes, stuff like that. A lot of herbs in there for tea. So I really want to start stocking up on those here and there so that I can have um, my tea cabinet full of loose leaf herbs and big containers like that when I'm starting to make my tea blends. So one thing that you need to make sure you do with your jars or whatever container you want to put your dried herbs in is make sure they are clean but make sure they are absolutely dry and make sure your funnel is dry, make sure your lids are dry, make sure your hands are dry. You do not want to go through all this work of harvesting and growing and drying herbs to find that there's a tiny little bit of moisture in something and a few weeks later you open it up and there's mold. So always just take that extra step. Sometimes I will just make sure my jars are washed a few days before and set them on the table to air dry so that I can just be absolutely sure there is no water in them. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this. Oh, one other tip too is when you use stuff like parchment paper or freezer paper is what we're using today, um, or wax paper, anything you can get your hands on, and they actually have them at Dollar Tree, so you don't even have to spend a lot to do this. Um, you can put all, you can do all your mints on one sheet. Now I'm not saying mix them together, but like I will do my chocolate mint, and then I will do my peppermint, and then I will do my apple mint, and then after I'm done crunching it up, and I scrape it out and put it in its jar, then I will switch this to a different one, or since the freezer paper is pretty thick, you could almost flip it, but because my pan is not very clean, I'm going to switch it, and then I will do my savory herbs, like I have a couple bunches of oregano that I want to do. So make sure that you maximize what you have, what you're using, and as long as you know you wipe out, funnel out everything that's in here, if a tiny little bit of the flavors mix and mince, it's not going to do you any you know, harm. It's not going to even, you want to taste a different. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is these, I believe these are all lemon balm. And see, look at how similar these look. Let me, so a lot of times, like I said, your herbs look so similar once they're dried. This is lemon balm. Then I have some peppermint right here. And so it's really, really hard sometimes to tell the difference. And then chocolate mints over here the leaves of the chocolate mint look a little bit different I could tell because the stems are purple on the chocolate mint but one way <laughs> see when you don't label you're over here doing a sniff test like on every bundle to make sure they're right and that's I didn't even harvest my lemon balm with y'all yesterday I have a whole bunch of lemon balm and then two parts of the yard that I need to harvest and then I think there's another patch of mint 
oh, that big garden that I showed you, I saw that there was some bergamot mint that I haven't, I think it's a mint that I haven't harvested. And so I need to go out there and get that. But all right, I'm actually going to start with the apple mint as a very simple process. Because I have such a big, large area, I'm going to be there with bands on. I just take my hands and I go like this. I just crunch them all the way down. Keeping your rubber bands on actually helps keep things condensed a little bit better. And then I will just separate it a little bit, make sure I get enough. I get some big stems like this. I'll just pick them up, put them in the bowl for the chickens. Drying herbs is so wonderful. The idea, sometimes I feel is romanticized into this. You have to have all these wonderful racks and all these wonderful tools to strip your herbs and sit down, and, you know, and, and that is great. I do have those tools and I do have dehydrators, but when you're harvesting a mass amount in the season of abundance, when you have 50 million other things that you need to do, it's just so much easier to just crumble them up like this. So the next batch, and see, I just keep all my same kind of mint in here. So easy. Now you're going to start to smell that mint very quickly and it's going to smell lovely. So you just keep crumbling. That's why it's really good to make sure that your herbs are nice and dry hanging up in your house so that when it comes to this step you are using your time wisely and you are also making sure that you get most of those leaves off of those stems. All right, I'm going to set this one aside because I'm going to get the... Now before I um, take this to the chickens, I will take all my rubber bands off and my little tags like this. I right, have one more apple mint to go. And this so easy. This smells really good. It's kind of like a gloomy rainy day today, so it really is a perfect day for tea. Actually, if I was honest, every day is a good day for tea. <laughs> it's like every day is a good day for coffee. Some days you just have to make it iced. <laughs> That's like tea. I actually was watching Ruth Ann Zimmerman this morning, and she made probiotic tea, and I want to try that sometime. If y'all don't watch her, she has been such an encouragement to me. She is such a sweet, sweet person. We have chatted a little bit, and I just wish she was my neighbor, but I am grateful that the Lord has given us the ability to get to know people online. Now, as you can tell, there's still some leaves tucked inside of here. I will just move these apart and try and get out what I can. But because I know that these things are very good for my chickens, I am not going to try and get every tiny little bit off. I'm going to be able to bless my chickens with some good nutrition and help boost their immune system give their guts a little bit of something good. So as I go through here, I pick out anything that's hard and I just throw it in the chicken bucket. Now I don't grind my pieces up very fine when I get ready to make the teas. Um, I will be able to do that. Next step, but I do go through here with my hand and just kind of feel through, make sure that I got any big chunks of stems out, make sure that everything is going to dry it. I know this one's going to dry, but, and it is okay to leave some of the stems. They break out pretty easily. I don't have a grinder to grind herbs in. I do have a coffee grinder and I don't use it very often. I wonder if that would work to kind of like make them into a powder. My blender doesn't do that very well. It's not a very high power blender. So then I'm just going to scoop it up and stick it in my jar. Apple mint is really good for teas. It's um, really good if you would let, you know, if you want to make a syrup with it to use. And baking is a very mild mint flavor compared to some of our stronger ones like the peppermint and the spearmint. One thing you will notice about the apple mint is there is a little bit, their leaves are a little bit furry, so 
Don't get scared by that. I'll just double check. But on the other side, the apple mint leaves, there will be a little bit of white. Very nice because that is what the leaf is. I like it. So there we go. So out of those three small bunches of apple mint, we got one quart jar of apple mint. Okay. On to processing all the rest. This is what we ended up with. I have this half of paint jar of oregano. Um, this one is chocolate mint. And then I have two quarts of apple mint. I found some more apple mint over there. And then I have this big jar of peppermint and this one of peppermint and this of lemon balm because I don't have any more big jars. So I'm hoping to have a cup of tea very, very soon. But we have a storm coming in and I was going to harvest some flowers for teas on Monday and I just checked the weather and we're supposed to have storms like the next three or four days. So I'll show you what I ran out and picked really quick. We have this big old basket of echinacea and my white echinacea finally bloomed this year. I'm so happy. Another bag of echinacea. This is some bee balm petals and some bee balm leaves. And then I have a big thing of bee balm leaf. Oh, I have a big thing of echinacea leaves that are drying as well in the window. I also have like a handful of chamomile that I have on a little plate in the window. So these will be some wonderful teas come this fall. And I'm actually going to use the echinacea to infuse honey. I did this last.